and welcome to episode nine of Geekers Creepers, the podcast where we talk about the creepy things in life and we talk about the geeky things in life. I'm joined as usual by my co-host, the man who's cooler than the other side of the pillow, Jose. How's it going, Jose? <laughs> yeah, I'm staying cool over here, Robert. You know, just another Sunday, Sunday evening, just getting ready for our show. How about yourself? How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a pretty uneventful weekend. It was uh, I was supposed <laughs> to go hiking today, but due to the weather, that got canceled. So uh, probably doing everything next week. Hopefully, we'll have decent weather next week. Yeah, it was definitely a nice rainy, cloudy gaming kind of a day. Mm-hmm. Even though I didn't do any of the uh, any gaming today, which I should have, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe next week. Yeah, I, I actually I just. <laughs> Of all games I was playing just now, I was just got done playing the Wheel of Fortune on my PS3. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, That's it's just a trivia. thoughtless game. Um, yeah, sometimes you kind of need those kind of games, just some you know mindless, you know, like uh, what like a racing game or something like that, nothing too serious. Yeah, something where there's no pressure that you have to keep doing something, keep doing something. You just play it, and yeah, if when you get tired, you're just like I'm done. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah. Shut it off, no problem. All right. So as usual today, I'd like to start out. Let's go over what we're going to be talking about today. Um, honestly, there's not much in the side of news, so we're going to keep that pretty simple. But we're going to be going over the PS5 user interface. Uh, PS5s and Xbox, they're now at promotional deals. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to go over Blazing Lasers. Um, that's going to be our history on that and our review. We will then talk we have our topic about vr gaming and then we're going to get on the creepy side of uh creepy side of things and we'll be talking about the chupacabra we're going to be talking about our favorite horror movies and then a missing persons case by the name of maureen kelly uh with that said jose as usual let's uh talk about what we have been playing what have we been playing what have i not been playing actually i haven't been playing a lot um it's been a real like quiet week i've been you know mainly watching a lot of youtube lately Mm -hmm. Um, I did play a little bit of Ghouls and Ghosts on my uh, Turbo Graphics Mini, you know, to compare with the Sega Genesis version. Man, is that game! It, it's a hard game. I gotta say, it's a it's a pretty tough game. Yeah, that's but, what that game's been known for being a tough game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Genesis version, you know, <clears throat> you know, I've I've owned that since I was a kid, you know, I, mm-hmm. so I, I know that game. But it's it's vastly <laughs> more difficult than the Genesis version, I, I thought. Like, I couldn't get out of the second level. I was like, man, what's going on, you know? And not only that, the uh, Triple Graphics Mini only has, it gives you three continues, which which really sucks, you know, because the Genesis <laughs> version had unlimited continues, which was great, because, you know, yeah, I guess that's what's making it a lot tougher, you know, that it only has three continues. I'm like, oh, man, this is pretty damn tough, but yeah, it's been a, re- a real quiet gaming week on my end. I can't think of anything that I've played um, other than that, really. You know, how about yourself? Um, I've been here and there just dabbling as usual. I play my couple of games of Dead by Daylight. But then I've also, um, <clears throat> like yesterday, uh, well, actually this week, the last couple of weeks, I've really gotten back into playing San Andreas GTA. I just, mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's also one of those games that I really, really enjoy and when I pick it back up, it's always a lot of fun. So I've been doing that. Last night I played, um, there's a Telltale game. Uh, it's uh, Texas Hold'em. So it's like you play with the uh, t- uh, characters from uh, the Telltale games. And that's been a lot of fun. It's just, uh, just like I said, it's mindless. Kind of like playing, uh, what is that? Uh, Wheel of Fortune. You're just playing yeah. um, poker with a bunch of these guys that are making snarky comments. So <laughs> yeah, that's been pretty much it. Me too. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, getting some work done here and there. Um, uh, and yeah, that's been pretty much it. Not, uh, I haven't done anything new, but I want to go back and, and touch, you know, get some of my back catalog. I've been trying to see what I'm going to play, try to start up because I got a lot of games that I got to get to, you know? Yeah, no, I'm the same way. I was actually thinking of either <laughs> replaying, um, either spider-man god of war or horizon zero dawn because i always feel like oh, there's just so many games that that come out and i just don't have the time to play like 
the other games that I had previously beat, right? Which are great games. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like Spider-Man's a great game. Horizon Zero Dawn is a great game. And I'm like, you know what? Instead of buying a new game for a while, because I was thinking about buying Ghost of of Tsushima. And I was just like, no, I was like, I'm just going to, you know, play a couple of these old games, um, replay them again, shall we say. And, you know, once I've had my fill of those, you know, I'll probably pick up Ghost of Tsushima. But gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the back catalog, you know, I still have, oh man, so many games I still need to get through. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous. And I, I'm in the same, I'm in the same boat. I keep looking at these games. I'm like, oh, there's new games. They're so, they're so cheap on the, uh, on the PS store. But I'm like, I'm not going to play that game if I don't get to these other ones, you know? Um, I guess it's a first world problem. But, uh, <laughs> So first world uh, gamer problem. Exactly. <laughs> but with that said, let's talk about the little news that we have for this week. The first topic is going to be about the PS5 user interface. There was a video that recently came out that was released by Sony and they go into their interface, what their user interface. And for people that aren't, don't know what that means. The user interface is when you log on to your Xbox or PlayStation It's what comes up when you first log on and you get to choose what game you want to play. You get to, um, it's like, think of it like the windows, uh, the window screen when you first log on, you know, you get to pick what you want to do. Jose, did you, did you happen to get a chance to see the video for the PS5 one? Yeah, I did. I did. It was, um, I mean, it's definitely a lot more, um, I thought it looked a lot better than, than the PS4 version that we have now. And I mean, it's a user interface. You, I, I'm not going to get too too excited about it, you know. Mm-hmm. But it seems like they cleaned up some stuff. You know, they've gotten rid of a lot of um, what do you call it? Uh, they consolidated a lot of um, actions, I guess. Shall we say, like you know, they had, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the settings and all this stuff. You know, they've they've moved it all to like one button instead of like having to scroll on the PS4 all the way at the top. So I mean, like I said, it's a user interface. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like you know like oh my god it's so amazing you know <laughs> so like, i mean whatever <laughs> no i i agree but i i think there are some really cool things that they've included on here we have they have something known as well i'm right now i'm looking at the game spot article which we can i'll attach a link to it but they have things like uh some of those cards let me just describe it real quick what the article states it says cards are new and significant integration into how we'll be navigating the console's UI. They give you a glimpse into everything going on, like news, game activity, and what your friends are up to. And it will, and it will have unique integration into certain PS5 games. The big card-based features, activities, which are a way to track what you have and haven't done within the game you're playing. So in essence, if you're playing a game that has a lot of different activities to do, this card tells you, well, this is what you have or haven't done. And they're setting it up not to spoil anything for you. And these cards, what, I, what I've what i heard also is they're going to also include um, like game hints. Like you can click on something and it'll tell you like, this is what you want to do uh, in at this game to get to the next part. And now a lot of this is only included if you have PS Plus, but man, I mean, if they actually are able to implement this and it works, that's kind of genius, man. I mean, think about it. You're playing a game. You're stuck. There's so many times I'm playing a game and I, I got to put it down, put a pause, jump on my phone and look up yeah. like, what do I got to do here? <clears throat> right, right, right. Yeah, that's actually a pretty cool feature, you know, if, if they can implement it. And because you're right, I'm the same way. You know, there's a lot of times where I'm like, well, you know, time to pause it, time to go on YouTube and figure out where I, what I got to do next. Exactly. And, um, mm-hmm. So for them to give you a hint, you know, it's, it's pretty. I mean, you can do that technically in the game, but hey, if they want to do it in the in the, in the, the user interface, then hey, I mean. And I think there's also there's that they're going to include. Uh, again, I believe this is with just the um, PS Plus, but if somebody's watching you stream the game, they can jump in and play along with you right away. And I believe now, quote me, you know, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. So don't quote me on this, but I believe also <laughs> if you're watching somebody stream, like let's say somebody was watching me play, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Spider-Man, that you could actually jump into where I'm 
the area I'm at and play and continue my game. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I did. And, you know, that's a, again, that's another pretty cool feature, you know, like let's say you struggle or, or, you know, get stuck in a certain part of the game that one of your buddies might not, you know, you can be like, Hey, you mind passing this for, you know, it reminds me of like a, uh, when I go over to my brother's house and my nephew gets stuck on a certain map and mm-hmm. he always tells me like, Hey, you know, do it for me. And I'm like, all right. So, you know, I'll go ahead and, and pass the level for him. And um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's a nice feature. Yeah. Again, it's nothing to, you know, get crazy about. Cause it's just, you're right. It's just the user interface, yeah. but it just shows that I think PlayStation is doing a lot more to make this. At, they're listening to their fans at the end of the day, the PS3 one was, okay ps4 ui i was not a big yeah it was better but i was still wasn't a big fan this one it's actually looking it actually looks pretty cool like they're adding a lot to it um now i just hope they don't overcomplicate it to the point where i'm just like i i just want to play my game you guys are you know crowding this this thing and i don't i'm never going to use any of these features but Yeah, yeah Go ahead. No, it's, you're, you're right. You know, it's like they could overwhelm you sometimes with a lot mm-hmm. of the uh, stuff in the internet, uh, user interface. And for me personally, I really don't care. It's like, oh, whatever. I just, you know, there's like on my 360, I think it was on my Xbox 360, it gave you that option. Like, do you want to go to the user interface when, when you start it up or do you want to go to the game when you start it up, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, kind of, I, I mean, to me, it's like, whatever. I, I really don't care to be honest i mean <laughs> as long as the games are great you know we'll, you know i mean it looks cool it looks a, a lot more um i thought it looked better than than the ps uh the ps4 one but i think so know, too. like I, yeah but like i said i'm not like oh my god like this is all amazing it's the greatest <laughs> thing ever so it didn't well, make that Oh, uh, real quick, you know, like to me, one of the uh, the user interfaces that really like went from night and day. I don't know if you remember, um, on an Xbox 360, the original, when it had the blades. Do you mm-hmm. remember like what the blades were? And then all of a sudden, it jumped to like, sort of like what we see now. Mm-hmm. Now that was like night and day to me. I was like, oh my, I, you know, I was really blown away by that. But yeah, you know, I, I think I I've know, seen was... the Xbox one. It's just been a while since I don't own it. But, yeah. all right, well, with that said, let's go on to our next topic. Like I said, there's not a lot of news, so this one's kind of a little <laughs> weird. But um, as of uh, this week, um, and, and again, there's a reason I want to talk about this too. But as of this week, Burger King has decided to team up with PS5, and we have Taco Bell that's teaming up with the Xbox. Now... They've done this in the past and it's still, this is, and it's the same thing. You buy like a drink or you buy like a, like a chalupa box or whatever, and you get a code, you put it in and potentially you can win either the new Xbox series X, or you can win the new PS five. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Burger King in the past had a deal with Xbox and they had put out a lot, they put out a few games. Do you remember these games, Jose? Yeah, um, there were like free games, if I'm not mistaken. No, I believe they were like five bucks a piece. Oh, five bucks? Okay. Yeah. They were real cheap. And yes. I think it was like a Burger King game or something like that with the uh, yeah. with the mascot. <laughs> there, there was like, Burger King had, I th- I'm pretty sure there were three games. One of them was a like a bumper style kind of like, think of it like, um, what's that game you like? The cars that, the soccer Rocket car? League? Yeah, it was like a Rocket League, like a top-down Rocket League. The second mm-hmm. one was a racing game. And the third one was this game known as Sneak King. Sneak King was uh, it was the stupidest <laughs> game, but you played as as the Burger King, and you would sneak behind people and scare them. And then when they got all scared, you would give them like a like a, a whopper. You would dance, give them a whopper, or give them like a breakfast sandwich, and you would get points. So that's what it was. You were sneaking behind people and like popping out and. That game was strangely so addictive. I played so much of Sneak King, and I was just like, I was hiding in bushes and jumping out and giving people whoppers left and right. And now, let me ask, did you have a chance to play this game? No, it sounds pretty cool, though. I thought at first, you were, I thought you were going to say that, you know, the uh, the king you know, sneaks up behind people and gives them wedgies or something. <laughs> yeah, that- 
<laughs> well, the other reason I'm talking, bringing this up is because <laughs> now that they're teamed up with PS5, I wonder yeah. if maybe they're going to come out with another sneak king. Maybe this time the king will give him wedgies, even though I don't think Burger King would be up for that. <laughs> yeah, it was a. Did you see now? Did you actually see the commercial for that? No, I haven't. So it had a tie in actually because what happened was the, the king or whatever the Burger King guy, his mm-hmm. character is named the mascot, whatever. Mm-hmm. He like peeks inside a Burger King bag and it's glowing blue. And then it had the date, um, which was, I believe it was Wednesday. And everyone was like, oh man, what's going on with that date? So that date that was on the Burger King commercial was the date of the uh, user interface reveal. Oh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> so that's, that was pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, I like, like I said, I'm, I'm hoping that this tie-in might extend to you know Burger King doing more. <laughs> I'm telling you, this game was so it was so creepy, but so much fun. Like you could actually, I didn't realize this, but you could play as not not just the not just the king like in third person, but you could play in first person, where you would only see through his eye holes, like you know, like his mask, and you would hear him breathing in the background, like he'd be like, <sighs> like. As you're sneaking like around, Myers. like Michael Myers, exactly. But instead of stabbing people, you give him like French fries and, and chicken sticks. <laughs> what the? <laughs> I'm like that That's is weird. You, it was it was a very weird game. They were all three of them were weird, and they were much better than they had any right to be. And, and for like five dollars, five dollars, yeah. Oh, for five dollars, you know that was that wasn't bad at all, you know. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm hoping you know this this will be more than just a uh, another commercial, you know, like uh, opportunity. You know, maybe it'll, there'll be it'll lead to more. I don't think Taco Bell can really do anything. I mean, I guess what they have the Chihuahua. So maybe. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> oh, was it? Oh, yeah. That's a, uh, I want a Chalupa. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? He's like, yo, want... yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> I think that was his thing. Yo quiero Xbox. <laughs> Maybe they could. I don't know what they could do. I don't know. They could bring them back or something. I've actually. I think I've seen a couple of the uh, their commercials, and I'm like, you know, they keep like plugging Halo. I'm like, oh, that game's not coming out for like. <laughs> yeah, who know. knows if it is coming out? You know, like who plugging Halo already? <laughs> I'm trying to think like what what kind of game uh, Taco Bell could bring up. I'm like maybe a dog fighting game, <laughs> a dog fight, a dog platform game like Sonic or something, <laughs> Crash Bandicoot style. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see what happens with those. Um, you know, I highly yeah. doubt we're going to get the games. You know, but it's just wishful wishful thinking, wishful thinking. Yeah, that'd be actually pretty cool. Like if you get like games again for like five bucks, brand new games. You know, so, yeah, man. And it'll be cool. I, uh, I think I think that would be a better marketing strategy than just having, um, you know, just just a regular commercial. But we'll see what happens in the future. I'm you know keeping my fingers crossed, but I'm not really yeah. thinking anything's going to happen. And what you just heard was the one of the many, many amazing songs from Blazing Lasers. This next topic is going to be about Blazing Lasers, the Turbo Graphics game. We both, Jose and I, were both playing it. We're going to go into a little history about that, a little personal history about the game also. And then eventually we're going to give you our opinion and thoughts about this amazing video game that came out. So... Let me start out by going over a little history about Blazing Lasers, the game. Now, Blazing Lasers is a top-down shooter that was released in Japan and in America in 1989. Now, in Japan, it was released, I believe, in July of 1989. In America, it was released in August of 1989. The reason why that date is special is because in August of 1989, the Triple Graphics was also released. So Blazing Lasers was had the same release date as the Triple Graphics. Of all the games that could have been released on that date, this game was a fantastic choice for NEC to choose to release. Now the game was compiled was developed by 
a company known as Compile. The game was directed by Masamitsu Mu Nitani, who was the president of Compile, and he also created Xanak, The Guardian Legend, and the Puyo Puyo series. It was also created by Mikio Uyama, director of the Super Bomberman series for the Super NES, and Tadayuki Kawada, who is designer of the Super Famicom game known as Doremi Fantasy. Now, Compile, as I stated, is best known for Puyo Puyo, but the, there are also these other good games that, um, that were released. Now, Puyo Puyo right now is currently out, I believe, on the SNES or the SNES collection on the Switch. That's more like a Tetris style game. Now that has nothing like Blazing Lasers. The other game was Super Bomberman, also a fantastic game. I believe that's still around that franchise. Again, nothing like uh, Blazing Lasers, but there's another game that I mentioned here that was created by Masamitsu Nitani, and that is The Guardian Legend. The Guardian Legend was out for Nintendo, and it was a top-down shooter as well as a side-scrolling game. Now that top-down shooter aspect you could see slowly evolve into what we now know as the game Blazing Lasers. Now, furthermore, it was also, it was, it was created by Compile, but it was also published by Hudson Soft. At the time, 1989, uh, up until maybe 1993, 94, Hudson Soft was a powerhouse company when it came to gaming. They, put most of their efforts into the Triple Graphics games, also known as the PC Engine games, uh, also known as the PC Engine in Japan. But they put so much, so much of the resources into the Triple Graphics. If there was a Triple Graphics game, it was more likely than not, you would see that little B logo, which was Hudson Soft on that video game. So again, this was uh, published by them. And let me uh, describe, I do have the, uh, the booklet for Blazing Lasers. Let me describe what this game is so everybody understands. Well, let me not describe, but let me tell you what the story is behind Blazing Lasers. Dark Squadron, dead ahead. Get to your battle station, space jockey. You're in for the fight of your life in this, the ultimate outer space shoot 'em up Blazing Lasers. Seated at the helm of 80 tons of awesome firepower, a gunhead starfighter. You just run into the ruthless dark squadron, dangerously close to the earth. They threaten to destroy the world with eight super weapons. Only you and your starfighters, blazing lasers and bombs stand between them and certain destruction. Plan your strategy and power up with the eight different enhancements that appear. You'll need more than straight shooting to fight your way out of this one. All right. Pretty, that's uh, pretty uh, basic. There's not much to that, but there is something that I said here that I never noticed until I did a little uh, research into the history. Let me read this one more time. Seated at the helm of 80 tons of awesome firepower, a gunhead starfighter. That word, gunhead. Now, when, when I was a kid, I had no clue why they named it a gunhead. But I found out the reason is that when this game was released in Japan, it was a tie in to a movie known as Gunhead. And it was this was only released in Japan. It was a movie. Uh, if you look at the previews, it looks a little bit like Terminator or Alien, but it's about a, a ship, about some mech mech ship in in a, a future in a futuristic city now this was eventually released in america but not until decades later it is a very corny looking movie but again blazing lasers now again I, I must also add in japan it wasn't called blazing lasers it was actually called gunhead so gunhead in japan blazing lasers in america again it was a strangely a tie-in to this movie now let me also while i while we talk about gunhead let me tell you what this prologue so you can get an idea how unusual it was that this was a tie-in because nobody knew, nobody knew. But let me give you the uh, prologue for this movie known as Gunhead. In the early 2030s, a new material called Tex-Mexium, 
can't believe they called it Tex Mexium. That's my family. Maybe it's a, we're all Tex Mexes. <laughs> I guess I guess in the future we create the superpower. So a new material called Tex Mexium, more powerful than nuclear energy, enable the world to be controlled by a new generation of supercomputers. Due to fear of misusing Tex Mexium, it was guarded within hypernuclear facilities that powered every major city. Concurrently occurring was the world's depletion in raw materials to create new all-powerful computers. Conductive plastics and computer chips have outvalued gold and gave rise to tech scavengers that seek their fortunes through acquiring and selling computer parts despite the extreme dangers. During the year 2005, okay, uh, the cyber tech company built one of the most advanced robotics development facilities upon a small Asian island simply called 8JO. Controlled by a highly advanced AI system, Chiron 5, the AI autonomously ran the island for 20 years until it, until it came to realize humanity wasn't needed and began to use their own technologies to rel rebel against humanity. The Great Robot War began. To quell Chiron 5's insurrection, the Allied power dispatched a gunhead battalion in an attempt to stop Chiron 5. However, it was protected by a powerful guardian, Aerobot. The battalion was defeated and all its remains were thrown in a scrapyard. The conflict never had a clear victor, but the world allies chose to leave 8JO alone. It'll be 13 years later for anyone to discover Chiron 5 survival and true intentions. All right. That seems really complicated, but I want <laughs> everyone to understand when you play Blazing Lasers, lasers you none of the story is ever, ever told to you. So now, the game itself, when it was released, it was, for lack of a better term, because this I know this is a game we're talking about, but it was unbelievably, unbelievably beautiful as far as graphics at the time it was released. It consisted of multiple bright levels, diverse enemies, huge and detailed diverse bosses. You had four different weapons that were picked up throughout the game, as well as secondary weapons or shields. You could also select how fast you wanted your ship to go. And finally, there was that awesome soundtrack. And maybe it's that awesome soundtrack is why in 2016, Kanye West said Blazing Lasers was his favorite game on the console. <laughs> uh, and also, I want to add that this didn't get past many critics because after its release, it did receive many high scores. And with that, that's just a basic history of the game known as Blazing Lasers. And right now, Jose, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we thought about it, and maybe your own history into you know what you remembered about this game. Yeah, Blazing Lasers definitely. If there was a, a video game Hall of Fame, it would be in the pantheon of of games. You know, it's to me at least, it's it's one of the the goats of, of the, sh the shoot 'em up genre, the shooters. I call them shooters, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people will call them shmups or mm -hmm. shoot em ups, but, you know, when we were kids, you know, we always called it a shooter. Mm -hmm. And um, you're right, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful looking game. Um, the soundtrack is amazing. It's a fun game. You know, um, it doesn't, it, it's difficult, but it's, you know, it's not nothing like, I don't know if you ever heard of some game called Gyarus, which is almost, it's a, another shooter for the Genesis, which is like impossible to beat. And, uh, yeah, I have nothing but positive things to say about uh, Blazing Lasers. You know, one of one of the all time the best shooter, shooters of, of all time. Yeah, I mean, as as I was uh, when I was reading over this, um, like the history, and you know, I played it again this past week. A few things that you notice is, uh, well, let me ask: Did you ever play Guardian Legend, the Guardian Legend? No. Okay. Well, you could definitely see the influence that came out of this. Um, it is this tap down shooter. It's not, and again, yeah, people call shoot 'em up or shmups. It's not as bad as, um, oh, what are they called? They're called Hell. Um, oh, Hell Bullet games? Yeah, Hell Bullet games, where that one is just, there are like hundreds of bullets throughout the screen. It's not that bad. It does get intense. Don't get me wrong. It does get, it does get pretty crazy in the game, but not to that point. Um, the, the colors are vibrant when you play this game. Each level is different. And the bosses are huge. Like each boss, I mean, you've got bosses that they're huge ships. You get other ones that are, you get insects. Like there's, 
Terex the Great, a spider-like creature that spits out bugs at you when attacking. <laughs> There's literally a boss that's a huge skull. And it, so all these all these bosses, they're all unique. They're all different, all in different levels. And again, the soundtrack is just unbelievable when you, while you're playing this. This music is just rocking, man. Yeah, it, it's a, a, an amazing soundtrack. I, I love it, like... You know, if I could, like, hear it, like, in my car, you know, like, if I could, like, somehow, like, burn it on the CD, like, I would blast it, you know? <laughs> like, that's how good of a soundtrack it is. Yeah. And so, you know, th- this is our praise for the game. Um, and, you know, just going to a little bit... Well, for me, actually, uh, as far as when I played this game, when I first played it as a kid, I wasn't, like, the biggest fan. You know, I, I grew... It grew on me as I got older, and I'm like, you know, this is a really good game. And I remember I got I got this game maybe around ninety or so nineteen ninety. It was my aunt that bought it for me. It was a it was a uh, birthday present, and I believe they had it on sale. So because it had already come out in nineteen eighty nine, so she bought this for me, and I played it a few times, thinking, all right, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun game. But I was a lot younger, uh, getting the hang of playing these shoot 'em ups. Uh, it was it could be a little difficult going back and you know playing it now it's still don't get me wrong really tough i it's this is a this is a difficult game but i appreciate it a lot more for um for what it does and i gotta thank mona my aunt for that because without her i probably wouldn't have had this game yeah you have a great aunt because um i don't think my aunt's got me anything <laughs> <laughs> and for them to get you a turbo graphics blazing laser is one of the greatest shooters of all time you know that that you know she definitely knows knows you very well (laughs) so with that said let's talk about how each of us would review this game jose i'll have you go first if you were let's use a 10 point scale if you were to say and you know and if you could just give like a reason why you would give it whatever score you're about to give it what would you say what would you say uh blazing lasers is as far as a uh Game. Uh, as far as the game, oh man, I mean, to me, it's it's definitely one of those ten out of ten games. You know, like uh, I don't know if maybe it's uh, more nostalgia that has anything to do with it as well. See, I didn't I didn't play Blazing Lasers until much later in life. I was already like, well, like maybe in my thirties, maybe uh, late twenties. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was a kid, you know, I only I you know I could only get a Sega Genesis, you know, my dad, he was very, uh, he was a cheapskate, so <laughs> for, for us to have one console was enough, and I remember, um, one night, it was, a uh, it was on a weekend, I used to have my routine where I would play, uh, you know, my, my games or whatever, and then, I don't know if you remember, they used to have this one show called, uh, The Twilight Zone, like, the new version, like, the 80s version. Yeah. Uh, so they used to have like the uh, the uh, 80s version of Twilight Zone, and I would watch it, you know, at night. And I remember seeing a commercial for Blazing Lasers, and I was like, completely, like blown away. Like I was like, oh my god, I wish I had the Turbo Graphics, or I wish <laughs> this game. You know, it was one. Of, it was definitely one of those where if if I was an adult, I would I would have gone to the store and bought that console probably that that night. You know. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, but yeah, it's a it's a great game. It's a like you said, it's a difficult game, but it's not um, what's the word for it? It's not uh, merciless. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not like relentless, where you, you know where you just feel like frustrated and get like you want to give up and, and throw your, your your remote at the TV. It's nothing like that. It's a it's a fun game. It's you know the graph like I said, the graphics are are, are colorful, big sprite bosses. You know, um, different lasers, that you, the different weapons that you could pick. The soundtrack is amazing. Uh, it's one of my. It's definitely probably my top two shooters of all time. It's either between that one and uh, Thunder Force Three, which is another one of my favorite shooters of all time. Wow, well, that, that's high praise. High praise. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great game. Uh, you know, like I said, as far as shooters go, to me, it's a, it's a it's a ten out of ten. And and this one, I am going to agree with you. I am also going to rate Blazing Lasers a ten out of ten. My, and I'm going to rate that as a ten out of ten back when it was released, and a ten out of ten now, 
because even for people who are, you know, if you got kids that are used to playing games on the PS, you know, PS4 and now in the future PS5 or the Xbox, I can tell you that if you go back to Blazing Lasers, it still holds up. The it graphics, holds up very well. Yeah, the graphics are still going to look good. It's when it's a top-down shooter, it you know you go back and forth, side to side, up and down, and it's not it's not like playing a game where you look at these graphics and they look like well you know is that supposed to be a person? No, you know what you're supposed to see, and or you know what what the characters are supposed to be. It holds up very well. It is definitely a game you can go back and say, I appreciate this back when it was released, and I appreciate it now. And for that, I would say it's a 10 out of 10 game. It's rare that yeah. I could say games still hold up well. Um, it's as games evolve, uh, sometimes the, the older generations don't. This is one that does. This is highly recommended. 10 out of 10. Highly recommended. Yeah. And like I said, it's got that. If, again, even Kanye West himself has said that this is his favorite Triple Graphics game. You know, you might not like Kanye, but I've got to, I've got to uh, respect you agree his with him. decision. Yeah, I agree with him as far as this decision to state that this is his best, his favorite. Now, is it my favorite for the Triple Graphics? No. You know, I still have other ones that I preferred, but this game in and of itself is a 10 out of 10 game. Yeah, I actually just played it the other night as well on, on my Triple Graphics Mini, and I was just like, man. You know, I was playing it before bed, and I was like, man, I really got to get to bed. You know, I was like, I got to go to work tomorrow. And I was just playing it, you know, it was just that kind of, you know, it has that kind of addiction where you just want to keep playing and just want to keep going through the game. And, you know, I've never beat the game personally, you know, but I enjoy, like, every, you know, every part of that game that I've gotten up to. I believe yeah. I've gotten up to, um, like you said, that spider boss. I think I beat that spider boss, which I thought was pretty easy. I was like, oh, man. But, um, Robert, which weapon did you pick? Uh, do you pick when you play uh, Blazing Lasers? My favorite weapon is the is the actual laser because so okay, so let's go over some of the weapons here. Um, you have there's like I believe you have your regular bullets that you shoot. Yeah. You have homing missiles. You have uh, a like it's like a, a fan that shoots like three different directions. They're like it's it's a weird looking weapon. Then you also have a laser. Now the laser, when I, while you're playing the game, as you shoot enemies, you get to pick up these little purple gels. They're like little balls yeah. that are floating around. Each time you pick them up, your weapon gets that's stronger and stronger. Yeah, that's that's Tex Maxim. <laughs> <laughs> you just made you just made your own um, uh, Maxim. Yeah, it's probably it's that's probably the Tex Maxim. Um, but yes, as you as you play the game, you pick these up and your weapon gets stronger. And if you pick up enough with the laser itself, you get this green laser that it's it just hunts down everything and just takes out everything. It it it, it is I think it's a little overpowered, but it works well as long as you don't. Well, of course, as long as you don't get killed, because as soon as you get killed, you lose all the power ups that you had. Yeah. How about you, Jose? What was your weapon of choice? You know, mine is, uh, at first it was like you, uh, it was the lasers. I loved seeing the lasers like, you know, going, because uh, some of them swirl and then they mm -hmm. make all kind of, that for a while was my favorite. And, um, but I learned to discover that um, it's like that number two, it almost looks like a, like a, like the Wi-Fi signal sort of. That's the one. Yeah. That's the other one I meant, like the fan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like the fan one. Right. Right. Yeah. But see what I did was is I would always used to, I used to get the shield, but I I stopped getting the shield and I got like my little two satellites okay. on the side. So man, so I have like my two orbs on the side and then I, you know, me in the middle, and I just blast everything away with, you know, with that uh, number two weapon, which is like my favorite. And um but yeah, it's uh, that one. Was, uh, I just re recently started using that one, but before, for the longest, that's all I would use is, is use that lasers that you were talking about because mm -hmm. you know they're colorful. They're you know, like I said, they're you know, it's a cool weapon. I mean, they're yeah. all you know. Other than the first one, I thought the first weapon kind of sucked, but um, usually my weapons that I'll use is that number two and that number three one, the lasers yeah. and the the um, the fan ones. I think those are the go-to ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, 
as with that said, I believe Geekers Creepers then both unanimously say that this is a 10 out of 10 game. 10 out of 10 game, no doubt. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's been our little history and review of Blazing Lasers. We hope you enjoyed it. And on to our next topic. So the next topic we have is just our, it's a question that I I brought up to Jose last week and maybe he's had some time to uh, think about this. We both are fans of VR gaming, virtual reality gaming. We both have a PS PlayStation VR. Uh, There were many times where Jose and I, we would go enjoy some chicken wings and talk about gaming. And we would talk about a lot of the uh, PS VR games and I brought this up last week asking Jose what game or what type of game you could be as precise as you want, or just as, um, as vague as you want, but is there a VR game that you would love to see released? And I'll have you Jose start out. Yeah, definitely for sure. It'd probably be um, Panzer Dragoon or Panzer Dragoon Orta. One of those Panzer Dragoon style games where you could just like, I can't imagine what it would be like to like hop on a dragon and, you know, for those who don't know, who don't know, Panzer Dragoon is, is, to me, it's one of the most underrated Sega franchises of all time. And uh, what you do is you ride around, it's an on-rails game where you hop on a, on a dragon and, you know, pretty much just, <laughs> I guess, like a 3D shooter, you know, you shoot um, <laughs> other dragons or whatever, uh, the bad guys. Well, I think that would be a pretty cool game, you know, just to be able to like hop on a on, on a dragon and just to be able to see it in VR and see the wings flap mm-hmm. and fly around and, and and everything like that. I think you know, seeing the dragon shoot, you know, that'd be pretty pretty amazing. I think. Okay, I have a few, um, and I'll let me give one, and then I'll have you give another one if you have another idea. One is, I have to first say I am not a fan of card games. You know, there's a, I've tried them, I've tried them, but I just never get into them. But what I always think, and I I don't, I think I heard this from somebody else. I would, I would think it'd be awesome would be a VR card game where like, you know, let's say it's a, it it takes place. It's like a a dungeon, you know, like, like a a Dungeons and Dragons type of card game Mm -hmm. where you're in a, an inn, you got people next to you, you're at a table and some guy decides to play a game of cards against you, you know, like, um, what are they called? What are some of the famous card games called? Um, like Texas Hold'em? No, no, I'm, I'm talking like the actual... Oh, um, you're talking about like a Dungeon... Like, what do you mean, like Dungeons and Dragons or something? Yeah, what, what are the... Um, what is that one that all the kids or not played? Dungeons and Dragons. Magic, um, Magic, like Magic the Gathering. Gathering. Yes, like Magic. Mm-hmm. All right, so some guy gets in front of you and decides to play against you with this, like, the Magic the Gathering card game. So as you play, like, let's say you put down a a card that says that you're in a forest suddenly around you, the, the inn that you're in turns into the forest. You know, if you put another card down that says you're playing as a, as a minotaur, suddenly a minotaur appears next to you to fight the other character. So it evolves as you put these cards down as to what you're going to be playing. And so, you know, like if the other guy chooses to have a dragon, now you have a dragon versus a minotaur, you're in a forest and you're, and you're watching mm-hmm. all this play out in front of you and then once the battle is over you go back to the inn you know and you keep playing you're, it's your next round your next round it changes up i think one of the reasons why i'm not a big fan of card games is because you have to use your imagination with everything and you know sometimes my imagination just gets too bored i don't want to do that <laughs> but with this it would be cool because like each game or each card would evolve into something you know something different i think that would be an awesome vr game one that i think would be awesome all right. Well, that's it. Uh, you have any other games that you would want to see as VR? Um, now that I'm thinking about it, you know what would be pretty cool just to see like Tyson's Punch Out in VR, like That'd fighting awesome. all those. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they got fight. They got Honda. boxing. They got boxing games in VR. Yeah, yeah. What do they have? The uh, the Rocky game. They got Rocky. Uh, and... I think you have the Rocky game. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, what else is there? There's another one that you fight like they're not just they're not like people like you fight it. It's more like Tyson's Punch-Out. The characters are really, you oh. know, 
flamboyant. You at one point you even fight an octopus. Oh wow! You know, like it's it's out. They're very cartoony. If you if you want to, you know, you should check that one out if you if you think you know you like Tyson's punch out. It's a workout though, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, I did the Rocky one. I was I was huffing and puffing. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I'll check it out. I'll, I'll see what it looks like. Another game I would like to try out in VR would be if there was like a, a GTA type of game where you actually play in a city. Um, you know, you could drive around, uh, rob a bank, you know, do like the GTA kind of stuff in a city. And the only thing that worries you about that game is, look, I know that games don't don't lead to violence. But man, if I was playing VR and I'm sitting there shooting up people. I don't know, man. That's I could see how that would that would negatively affect you know some kid. It'd be like, well, you know, if I could do this in in San Andreas, I can go out and you know do something bad. But I personally, I would like to see like a VR open world game that's set, you know, like like I said, like a like a Grand Theft Auto. I think that'd be really or cool. Like, or like Spider Man, even you know, swing around like Manhattan in VR. That would be pretty cool. That'd be cool too. I think with that one, I would get motion sickness right away. I think Spider Man, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be throwing up left and right. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that that would mess. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool though. <laughs> that would be cool. You know, swing there is, there Manhattan. is all there is a Spider Man game for VR. You know that, right? No. Are yeah. you talking about the um, Homecoming or something like the that? The Homecoming one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's an actual game. I thought it was like a like a movie demo or something. Well, it, it's 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 an actual game, but it's just mm-hmm. it's only about maybe 15 20 minutes long. You should check it out. It's Okay. All right, a- anybody that's listening to this, if you're going to check it out, don't write me back and say, you know, this is a stupid game. It's it's look, mm-hmm. I know it's not a very good game, but it's still you're put in the shoes of Spider-Man. And it's uh um it, it's it's fine. It's a fine game, I guess. But, what about uh, um, Iron Man? Did you play the Iron Man in VR? I did. I did. Oh, yeah. What I, did you think? I, I liked that a lot. I took your recommendation. Yeah. I played it. But then I, I did my own. Um, I, not my own. I, I read some of the reviews, and they said that that first level is as good as it gets. Like, after that, the game's yeah. kind of basic. Yeah, I didn't buy the game either. I was like, yeah. oh, you know what? If that's the case, then I'm pretty happy with the demo. <laughs> yeah, the demo was just fine. I'm like, it's really cool. But, mm-hmm. it, you know, if it's yeah. if that's the rest of the game, I'm like, nah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll pass. Mm-hmm. There were um, the only other game that I always wanted to play in VR was Skyrim. And that came out in VR. And I still go back to play that one, you know, every once, once every couple of weeks. I know you're not a Skyrim fan, right? No, I'm not not a, uh, not by the least. <laughs> okay, yeah, that one is actually really cool, and there are dragons in that one too, which you fight. Um, mm. And when you see like this huge dragon drop in front of you, that is insane, man! Like, like if you play the game on your just uh, on your TV screen, you don't understand the sheer size of what these things are until you play it in VR. The other thing that <laughs> it puts it in perspective. Yes, and the other one are the spiders. They've got like these huge spiders. Holy cow, man! That is when you got one of them jumping on you, like you're just swinging away. I mean, if anybody were filming me play VR, I'd look like an idiot swinging at the air. But those <laughs> things scare the hell out of me. Oh man, yeah, that sounds actually pretty cool. Hack away at some spiders, yeah, and dragons, and you, and you got magic and everything. I always play as the um, uh, mm-hmm. as, as an uh, like the sneaky archer. So the entire time I'm making those, you, you have to make the motion like you're shooting an arrow. Mm-hmm. And I'm just doing that left and right, man. I'm just making the motion, just shooting everything, you know. But um, if it ever goes on sale for pretty cheap, I would I would say give it a shot, Jose. I think give you would like that one, you know. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been wanting to play a little bit more VR. So yeah. that would be a good excuse. Me too. I've, I've been wanting to get back to playing more VR. Uh, the only – man, I'm lazy. I just – like it's just put the whole thing on and just you know like sit there with it you know it's just like it, no. sometimes yeah I don't feel like I'm just like I'd rather pick up a controller. Yeah, no, you're absolutely. That's the main reason I really don't play either. It's just sheer laziness. It's like oh man, I have to you know drag it all out and connect mm. it and put it all on. It's it's a big chore just to play a game. Yeah, and uh, you know I just thought of another game that I would like to see in VR. Metroid Prime in VR. <laughs> you know, obviously, these games are never going to come out in VR. But hey, it's a you know what would I like to see in VR? 
This is but, this is yeah, your world, your imagination. It's my world, <laughs> yes. If somehow Nintendo and Sony agree <laughs> to make a VR game. And you know, I was thinking about like, have you heard of that game um Dreams? Yes. So you could make a VR game. And I was thinking about maybe I should make like my own Metroid VR game for the you know for for uh, Sony. You know like, mm. you should I've been all right. So Dreams I'm waiting for it to go uh, get cheap because I do want to pick that up because yeah. people are making some crazy things on there. And I definitely want to check out, mm-hmm. like they might already have made a, a VR game. Well, I'm sorry, not a VR, uh, a Metroid VR game on there. Yeah. Yeah. They might, I think they even made like a, a they recreated a, a Silent Hill game. In yes. VR. PT. Mm-hmm. Yes. PT and VR. And I was just like, Oh man, this would be pretty cool to check out in VR, you know? And um but yeah, Metroid Prime. Like, did you ever play any Metroids by any chance? Uh, just the original, and uh, I recently started playing the uh, the SNES one because it's on the. It's, oh man, it's on my yeah, Switch. SNES one. Mm-hmm. It's a great game. To, uh, SNES one is mm-hmm. it's a, it's a classic. But Metroid Prime, you know, to me, when I first started like playing it, uh, now you mentioned this earlier, but it really feels like for me, like I was in a whole different like universe like it really sucked me into it you know where i when, when i played it i felt like i was on on another planet and you know like it was so weird you know and this was just through my little tv at the time yeah. i was playing on a little like um maybe like a little 12 inch color tv you know um, this is like good 20 years ago or something like that but yeah just imagining what it would be like in vr to be in a, in a metroid universe would be pretty pretty amazing and that's one of the amazing things about video games, man. And, it, you know, it's it's the fact that it a good game will put you in that universe and you'll just yeah. you won't want to leave. I, I There have been games like Bioshock was one where I was in there and I would stop after I beat one of the, you know, one of the bad guys and I would just look around and, you know, I'd be like, you would see like this shop. And I think to myself, I'm like, wow, what was this like, you know, what was the shop like? It, it's just it's just a facade. I know it's just a facade. It's just something yeah. that's you know part of the game, but you get sucked into. It. You're like you start to think, what was this? You know, what is it like to? What would it be like to live in this world? And yeah, it's you know, so weird. You really get sucked into like the universes, and mm-hmm. it's like you know, like you said, you just look around and you're like blown away by like how you know like detailed it is, and yeah, and, and this is you know. That's an old game that came out maybe like what ten years ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that'd be it'd be pretty cool to check those games out in VR. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of those uh, old school games that would definitely be fun. And I think, uh, yeah, I guess if, like you said, if Nintendo ever decided to team up with uh, <laughs> Sony, even though you know that Sony and Nintendo did team up at one point. That's true. That's true for their uh, original uh, PlayStation. I guess yes. was supposed to be a, a the new Nintendo console. And they had, they had a very nasty breakup. With <laughs> Sony said, "Screw you! I'm taking my ball and going home." Because they, yeah. <laughs> you know, what what a like alternate universe. If Sony, if Nintendo had just played good with Sony, they would not. I mean, think about that. Sony never would have started the PlayStation. Nintendo would have still been a, I personally think Nintendo would still be a powerhouse as far as newer technology. Now they're kind of, they do their own little thing. They're a little crazy. Yeah. But with Sony on there, they would have had all these, you know, they would have had CDs probably instead of using cartridges for so long. Um, Mm -hmm. Just different things, you know, and again, you would not have that competition with PlayStation. It, It might be right now, it might be Nintendo versus xbox yeah you know? that's a good point or nintendo because, yeah. sega might have <clears throat> still been around Sega, yeah because you wouldn't have had Nint- uh, playstation which pretty much doomed uh, um the dreamcast you know yeah. when playstation 2 came out and you know i remember when that console first came out or the dreamcast and i would tell people hey are you gonna get a dreamcast they're like nope i'm just gonna get a playstation it plays dvds yeah <laughs> the, and man, it just doomed it. You know, that could have been, like I said, it could have been maybe Nintendo. Yeah. That just, that's just, you know, what if, what ifs, but we'll what never if. know, man. We'll never know. Maybe, or maybe um, Sega could have teamed up with Sony. Yeah. 
or something yeah. like that. You know, you never know. Maybe that'll be our creeper episode, alternate universes. <laughs> <laughs> alternate universe. <laughs> All right. So funny. that's our topic for today. Um, we're going to be talking about our creepy topics in a minute, but as I'd like to uh, give our information out real quick. If anybody wants to contact us, they can always email us at geekerscreeperscast at gmail.com. Again, that's geekerscreeperscast at gmail.com. They can also follow us on Twitter at geekerscreepers. So if you guys have any topics you want us to talk about, or if there's any corrections you need to tell us, or you just want to tell us how much you hate us, you can send us an email. Um, Please keep the hate mail to a minimum. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or, um, or you want to tell us how much you love us you know? yeah you or if you want to tell us how much you love us how much you love yeah. uh, Jose's it's sexy probably. voice just send out, send him a shout out <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, I think next week we're going to be talking about glitches I, my buddy Mike said he gave us that idea so we'll probably be touching base on that next week so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with our creepy topics all right and we are back. The first topic I'd like to talk about regarding our uh, the creepy side of life is the infamous chupacabra. So <laughs> let me read a little bit of information about the chupacabra. Okay, this first part is from Wikipedia. So the chupacabra literally means goat sucker. From Spanish, chupar to suck and cabras, goats, is a legendary creature in the folklore of parts of Americas with its first purported sightings reported in Puerto Rico in 1995. The name comes from the animal's reported vampirism. The chupacabra is said to attack and drink the blood of livestock, including goats. So physical descriptions of the creature vary. It is, it is purportedly a heavy creature the size of a small bear with the row of spines reaching from the neck to the base of the tail. Let me also go into a little bit of the history here. The first reported attack eventually attributed to the creatures occurred in March, 1995 in Puerto Rico. Eight sheep were discovered dead, each with three puncture wounds in the chest area and reportedly completely drained of blood. A few months later in August, an eyewitness named Madeline Tolentino reported seeing the creature in the Puerto Rican town of... uh, Canovanas, um, when as many as 150 farm animals and pets were reportedly killed. In 1975, similar killings in the small town of Moca were attributed to El Vampiro de Moca, the vampire of Moca. Initially, it was suspected the killings were committed by a satanic cult. Later, more killings were reported around the island, and many farms reported loss of animal life. Each of the animals reported to have its blood blood dried through a series of small circular incisions. So, Jose... This is a uh, <laughs> the chupacabra. Um, there'll be so, I, I'll, I could bring up some more stories, but for right now, let's just start out. Uh, what is your professional opinion about the chupacabra? <laughs> I, I have no professional opinion because <laughs> I have no idea what that could have been. It could have been a drunk, <laughs> a drunk guy. You know, I don't know. Well, now, now, when did this come out? Like, when was it? Like, you know. National news. Do you know? Do you know? It was like 1995, 96. Man. I mean, 90s. I, you know, so I don't know how the chupacabra became so popular. Like I remember hearing about it, and I always thought, I'm like, oh man, this must be some kind of, you know, creature that I'm just hearing about, but it's been around for like hundreds of years. No, 1995, it came out. I I had a Saturn that was older than the chupacabra, you know. <laughs> so, you know, all of a sudden some. I don't know. Some guy has got his dead livestock and they see like, uh, you know, this little reptilian thing sucking the blood out of the, um, uh, out of his goats. The goats. Yeah. The goat sucker. It's, it's just what it is. It's a goat sucker. You know, of all things. Yeah. Of all things, like why a goat, you know, like why can he eat like, I don't know, like a chicken or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, goats are pretty tasty. So I, I guess I could understand. He's, a, he's, he's, he's very picky in, in, in the types of meals he eats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Chupacabra is very picky. And, you know, this kind of reminds me of like, <clears throat> there was a whole time period where remember crop circles were big. And yeah. Chupacabra was big and then bam, they just disappeared. Yeah. Like you don't hear about those stories no more. No, and, 
because everybody's got a cell phone and, and the, the drunk guy who said he saw the chupacabra probably just saw some, I don't know, man. He, yeah. Honestly, it's probably just a, a hairless dog just munching away on, um, on some goats, you know? Yeah. Also, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be like um, outer worldly. It could have been like maybe some kind of um, a, a DNA a genetic experiment, you know, gone wrong. And, you know, they could have been like maybe experimenting on some kind of creating some kind of weird like hybrid dog or something. He could have escaped, you know, it could have been, you know. All right. So strangely enough, that is a theory that people have brought up that it's like some kind of hybrid thing. I honestly mm-hmm. think it's just a dog. I Here's my... Here's my professional opinion as a um, mm-hmm. as a Geekers Creepers podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I believe that it was a dog, a hairless dog. I believe that probably whoever sees these things is either may, may have had a little bit of the libations, you know, some um, had had a little bit to um, to sip on. Too much drinky. Yes, a little, a little too much to drink. And what they're seeing is just a dog. The dog turns around, looks at the person, and he's like, all of a sudden, you know, dog looks at you late at night. You'll see like reddish eyes, you know, or something, you know, whatever. You'll see a, a weird light shining back at you. And they get all freaked out. Now, all of a sudden, you got a bunch of dead goats. <clears throat> you know, how are you going to explain this? You know, it was your job to protect the goats. And maybe your boss comes around. What are you going to say? I messed up. I got drunk. No, instead yeah. you're gonna say no, 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 no. I it, it was it was the goat sucker. Look, boss, I know I know all the goats got killed, but trust me, it wasn't because I was drunk and not making sure that the goats were not being killed. It was the goat sucker. There we go. Case closed. That's the chupacabra. <clears throat> Maybe it could have been the dog from Resident Evil. <laughs> Maybe it could have been. It could have been the dog from Resident <laughs> Evil. Because that dog is creepy. It looks like a chupacabra. <laughs> For anyone who's familiar with the Resident Evil dog, it's a zombie dog. <laughs> it's a, it is a zombie <laughs> dog, which I highly doubt it's a zombie dog either. Uh, yeah. But let's say, all right, so it started in Puerto Rico, and there have been sightings, they said, all over South America. There have been sightings in Texas. There's a lady here who even talks about, let me see here. It's chasing the chupacabra. This is the Texas chupacabras have a way of leaving behind bodies, or perhaps bodies in Texas have a way of becoming chupacabras. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here um, it is oh they, they talk about like you know the first uh, chupacabra in 1995 <clears throat> so let's see here the chupacabra is among the most popular of the mystery beasts an integral part of Texas folklore okay let me stop you there if 1995 is Texas folklore Texas needs to get better folklore this is yeah, 1995 okay. Not to, you know, not 1895. Lord yeah. Almighty. All right, but let me keep going here. An integral part of Texas folklore and a semi regular guest star in sensational cable documentaries, documentaries, and credulous local news reports alike. For 10 years, legends of the blood sucking monster have been a staple of rural life throughout the central part of the state, fueled by a succession of alleged carcasses, sightings, and tall tales. According to Ben Radford, researcher for the Center of Skeptical Inquiry, That sounds like a legit place. An author of Tracking the Chupacabra, Texas is a chupacabra factory, one of the foremost states associated with the vampire. But the chupacabra wasn't always a resident of the Lone Star State. It didn't always look like a dog. In the 21 years since the first supposed sighting of the creature, it has been a spine-backed alien, a winged kangaroo, or a goblin, a predatory monkey, or an unusually ambitious mongoose. Only one facet of the tale has remained constant. The chupacabra is out there in the dark thickets and empty deserts, and it wants your livestock. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I think chupacabra never caught on, really? I mean, it did for a while, but it kind of like fizzled out. I think mm-hmm. it's the name. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Once, you know, it's like um, uh, once people realize what it, what it actually means, you know, it's like, oh, oh, chupacabra. What does that mean in English? It means a goat sucker. <laughs> yeah, it sounds kind of lame. Like, oh, that's yeah. not... It's not cool. That's <laughs> pretty dumb, actually. <laughs> it's like um, uh, my buddy, when um, I finally told him, like, he, he was a big fan of burritos. And I told him once, I'm like, you know what that means in English, right? He's like, no. I'm like, it means a little donkey. He's like, oh. And ever since then, he's been calling <laughs> him little donkeys, you know? 
And it's like chupacabra. Maybe now we just call them goat suckers. Like, oh, yeah, man. Goat <laughs> did, you, did you see the goat sucker? <laughs> it's like... You know, Maybe like oh. a Mexican rest restaurant should bring it back and have like a a, a goat sucker meal, like you know, like a, a goat dish or something. They should chupacabra. chupacabra. Maybe that's what they should do. Just uh, make this. Well, look at the end of the day, this this chupacabra sold. You know, you're right. It picked up for a while, 1995 yeah. through 2000. That was like, I'm man. There was what end sync. There were the Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, and the Chupacabra. They were like the four big things, man. Yeah, yeah. They you were know, like, you know, the Chupacabra they took the world by storm. Yeah. <laughs> the Chupacabra should have, you know, jumped on this and did his own music video. <laughs> I think he I want to say he had a Spanish song. Did he really? Yeah, I want to say they did. They made a song about Chupacabra in Spanish. And um I, I don't remember it that well, obviously, but I think I want to say I think they made a song about him. <laughs> did it? Did it suck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, it sorry. didn't suck. It didn't suck gold. So it sucked something else. That's like, man, this. <laughs> This song sucks, goats. The Chupacabra <laughs> comes out. He's like, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. All right, it sucked something, but it wasn't goats. I wonder what the Chupacabra is doing now, you know, because you don't hear many stories. Maybe he retired. Well, yeah, I think he might have gotten sucked up in a in a with a crop circle, and they both yeah. disappeared or something. <laughs> they just no. He's maybe he's vacationing out, like you know, he's out in South America right now. Mm-hmm. Having a glass of uh, goat goat blood, and just uh, yeah, you know, enjoy. Should do because you know how we do our, our podcast about missing people. We should mm-hmm. do one about missing like uh, urban legends. Like yeah. what happened to like um, the Bermuda Triangle? You don't hear about it no, no. more. Like you did in the eighties. No, just disappear. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened with the Chupacabra. He was on a, he was on a cruise ship in the Bermuda Triangle and got lost. Maybe you know? I mean it isn't the Caribbean, you know the, the yeah. Bermuda Triangle. So you're right. He probably like he was, was being a... chased by that uh, by that farmer, and he like swam in the, in the ocean and just kept swimming with supernatural powers, and <laughs> somehow got trapped in a Bermuda Triangle. I was thinking he was just on a on a cruise ship going back to Puerto Rico, <laughs> going back to visit <laughs> his true, family yeah. in Puerto Rico, and got lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Is that where the Bermuda <laughs> Triangle is at? Maybe not. I don't know. But, uh, I, yeah. Either way, somewhere I, in the uh, in the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, that could but, yeah. Who knows? Maybe he'll make a comeback. Look, look. Britney Spears is making a comeback. And Sync is coming back. It's. I think the Chupacabra will come back too. He'll come back with this new hit single. You yeah. know, he'll come back. You know, meaner, and you know, instead of, of biting um, goats, he'll bite uh, goats. And next time, maybe he'll eat um, cow's blood too. Ooh, you know, la chupavaca. Yeah. <laughs> Chupavaca, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'll come exactly. back out. You know, he'll come for you know. Chupavaca. Yeah. So, oh, I time. guess we'll see what happens with the uh, with the chupacabra. chupacabra. But for anybody, any listeners out there, if you've had any experience with the chupacabra, write in. Um, also, tell us how much you had to drink that night, and um, mm-hmm. uh, and we definitely want to know about any any personal experiences. I had a friend actually one time. He told me that he saw uh, um, he did, he didn't know Spanish. He was uh, he was actually one of my um, gamer friends when I used to play Tony Hawk. Okay. Again, back like twenty years ago, he told me he saw a chakra, and I was like, chakra. I was like, what's a chakra? He was like, that one thing that you know that that Mexicans. He thought you know he was like he thought it was a Mexican <laughs> thing that that Mexican scene. I was like, I have no idea what a chakra is. I've never heard of that. <laughs> it's one of those like, things that Mexicans see. It's yeah. like only like me and you can see these things. <laughs> it's, it's like it's a sixth sense. <laughs> oh my god! Did you see the chakra? Right. Every, yeah, everybody yeah, else like, is. <laughs> everyone's white. They're like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, yeah. "Oh my god!" <laughs> I see chakras. <laughs> so I was like, "What is a chakra?" And then I was like, "Oh, I was like chupacabra." And he was like, "Yeah, that's it." And I was like, "Oh, yeah." But still, only Mexicans see chupacabras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're like, they're like, they're like our versions of leprechauns. So you, 
you know, it's like yeah. when, when you get to the end of a rainbow for Mexican people, we don't get leprechauns in a pot of gold. We get chupacabras and dead goats. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah but I was cracking up. I was like, oh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the uh, you, you get to the end of the rainbow. And you know, you look over. There's a chupacabra. Looks at you, he looks at you. He's like, "Hey, Holmes, <laughs> you just hit the <laughs> welcome to the end of the rainbow." <laughs> you got the lottery, Holmes. <laughs> he gives you a scratch off ticket. <laughs> I'm gonna drink your blood. <laughs> yeah, um, but to any listeners out there, um, uh, I think we've just realized that um, only Mexican people can see the chupacabras. I don't know, yeah. uh, and Puerto Rican people. We we have to make sure it's, it's Puerto Rican and Mexican people. Mm-hmm. So this uh, we are now starting this new myth. Uh, <laughs> so if anybody that's okay. not Mexican or Puerto Rican, if they see a chupacabra, it's probably dog. Only we can see them. It um, makes sense because you know chupacabra was big in Latin American countries yeah. and and Texas. You know Texas is a lot of Mexicans, yeah. so Tex, it was it had Tex Mexium. <laughs> Te- Tex Mexium. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was chupacabra. I had to maximum in it. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I think we've figured out the uh, uh, the history of the chupacabra, or we've we've solved the mystery. We've solved this mystery. Um, yeah. It is. It's either a dog or only a figment of the Hispanic's imagination. So, <laughs> on to our next topic. We're gonna touch base real quick on. We're gonna talk about our favorite movies now that it's Halloween. Our favorite horror movies, and then we're gonna talk about. A more serious case of the missing uh, case of Maureen Kelly. But before we get a little serious, let's talk about our favorite Halloween movies. Jose, mm. what? Well, let me ask: Are you a fan? Are you a fan of horror movies? Yes, I am. You know, I'm an '80s kid, so you know we grew mm. up on on horror movies, and um, I've seen hundreds of horror movies. So yes, yes, uh, you know, lots to choose from. Definitely what would you say? Give me your top three. My top three are, are are easy. It's well, my top two for sure are Halloween three, mm-hmm. Season of the Witch. That's my favorite Ooh. horror movie. All right. Which is a, 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 I know a lot of people are like Halloween three, but I don't know. There's just something about that movie that's so creepy, <laughs> and so Orwellian. You know, you're you're in a small town and you're being spied on, and you know they have cameras and mm-hmm. you know oh man, keep going <laughs> on duh, with that movie. Uh, my number two is Creep Show two. That's one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and I would say I'd say my number three would probably have to be A Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, those are my top three. <clears throat> and um, this Halloween, I will want Halloween is on a Saturday, so for years I had my tradition where I would watch um, Creep Show two and Halloween three on Halloween night. <laughs> And um, with this year being on a Saturday, I'm going to try and sneak in all three. Wow. Um, I'll give you, Halloween 3 is a scary movie. That's, um, uh, and to anybody that's never seen this, it has nothing to do with, with Mike Myers. It's called Halloween no. 3, Season of the Witch. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's, uh, it's weird. It's, I remember as a kid, it was just a weird, um, weird setup, wasn't it? Where they were trying to brainwash kids by putting like something in the Halloween masks, right? Yeah, no, their plan was to kill kids on Halloween. Oh, was that what it with was? The mask, yeah. So, see, when I was older, you know, because when I was a kid, like I said, I don't know, I just thought it was a, a, a creepy movie, a cool movie. You know, I always liked it even as a kid. But, <clears throat> you know, when you watch the movie as an adult, you know, and you pay closer attention, what they, and the guy kind of, like, the villain kind of reveals it at the end. But what they did was they, uh, stole one of the Stonehenge rocks. That's right. Okay. Right? And they <laughs> shipped it over, you know, to that small town, uh, um, wherever um, uh, Santa Clara, was, I think that's the name of the town where they uh, make these Halloween masks. And what they did was they rubbed um, some kind of uh, residue from the stone onto some kind of microchip on the mask. And it gets you know, it's supposed to kill kids when it gets triggered by a commercial that comes yeah. on. Uh, silver on shamrock. Is that what it is? Silver, yes. The silver shamrock mask and the yeah. silver shamrock uh, commercial. Yeah. So that is, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it, and it's so weird because mm-hmm. it's a movie that deals with witchcraft, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but the idea behind that movie was 
I thought it was a pretty cool idea. What they were going to do, John Carpenter, every Halloween, he was going to have a different Halloween movie. Um, well, a horror movie come out on Halloween, you know. Okay. Uh, so that's why it was called Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. It had nothing to do with the Michael Myers. Gotcha. But, you know, when people went to the theaters and they were like, wait a minute, this did not have Michael Myers. What's going on? You know, they, you know, it bombed epically and that whole idea was canceled. But I thought it would have been a pretty cool idea to, you know, every year to have a new type of horror movie come out. Yeah, I think maybe something like that nowadays would would play better because it would be it would right now you have the internet and everybody would know they're like, Oh yeah, this isn't going to be a follow-up to the other Halloweens at that time you saw Halloween and you're just like, Oh, this is a, a follow-up to the, the previous ones, you know, right. unless you were, you know, quote unquote in the zeitgeist and reading up on what these movies are, you probably didn't know you went in there thinking, Oh, this is part three. Um, yeah. yeah. I do remember watching that as a kid and, I got to go back and watch that movie again because it was, it's eerie. It's really it's like eerie. It's the a very sound. Eerie yeah. It's, it's got that. If correct me if I'm wrong, but it has that kind of synthetic soundtrack, right? It, that it does mm-hmm. that. What's his name is known for. Uh, is it John Carpenter. Carpenter? Yeah. Like he writes that music. Yeah. I think he does. I think he writes the mm-hmm. same music as well. And um, yeah, it's a very eerie movie. It's very, I wouldn't even say a horror movie. It's very, I, I want to say more like a thriller, sort of. I, I'd say it's unsettling. You know, that, that Yeah, it's be... very unsettling. Yeah, it's 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 a classic in my <laughs> opinion. It's very, like I said, it's very underrated. And it, it's not as gory as all the other, you know, horror movies out there. But it's, <laughs> to me, it's on, it's on a whole different type of level of, of, of movie, in my opinion. I put, the, like I said, in my opinion, it's my number one. <laughs> um. So my three, um, I'm going to go with Halloween, the original. That's one of my favorites. Now, a lot of people will probably watch that and say, oh, what's the big deal? Well, when that movie came out, there weren't really any movies like that. That movie itself was just creepy about a stalker and he just murders everybody. That original Halloween was, there's a reason why it's so great. And again, if you go back and watch it, a lot of kids might say, what's the big deal? Well, you have to remember, this is the original one that started it. I am similar to that vein. I'm going to go with the Blair Witch Project. A lot of people don't like that movie. I get it. But when I saw that movie, it was still... So when that movie came out, the internet was still in its infancy and people... And they were using that marketing, that internet marketing to have people believe that all this stuff was real. I went with this girl that when she left, she was shaking because she literally thought it was real. I kept telling her, I'm like, no, 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 it's not. It's it's, it's all fake and um, uh, you don't gotta worry about anything. But she wouldn't believe me. She's like, no, I heard in the news that it's all real. And that ending where you have the, you know, that guy facing the wall and the girl, you know, all of a sudden gets hit and drops the camera. Now, I, I'm sorry if I spoiled it, but this movie's like 21 years old, 22 years old. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, that's on you. Um, <laughs> But after that, there were a lot of copycats, you know, a lot of shaky cam footage videos. So people might go back and watch that and say, well, what's the big deal? You have to remember at that point in time, that movie was was just like unbelievably scary. Um, and then for my third one, man, I got to I'm going to cheat here because I got a tie. Um, oh. I, 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 there's two movies that I really like. One of them is called VHS. Have you ever heard of this one, Jose? I have. Yes. I've OK. Heard have you seen that one? I have not. That's more of a, a modern horror movie, right? Yeah, it's a modern one. It's an anthology series, and there's a lot of them are not a lot. There's like I think there's four or five different uh, sections. One or two are not that good, but they're the other ones that are just creepy, man. I mean, I watched it. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I was just it was it was legitimately scary. You know, there was. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't want to ruin this for anybody because there's, uh, let's just say there's one where it takes place. Like, you, you, did you ever hear about the Jonestown murders? No. Okay. That's the one where that uh, guy made everybody drink the Kool-Aid. And, oh. you know, he was like a religious cult. No, I never heard okay. of him. Um, well, this is, it, it, it kind of, it, it, it's a bit like that. You know, it's like, uh, it's about these guys that are uh, really, one of the sections is about this religious cult and, you know, you get to see, it just gets really weird, really creepy. And 
if you, if you ever get a chance to check that one out and the other one that ties it this is because this movie it's called let the right one in have you heard of that one i've never heard of that either okay swedish movie about a child vampire it is creepy but so good this is more like mm-hmm. it's not so much as scary as it's just a masterpiece as far as um telling a vampire story in a different way it's it's unsettling okay. and if you ever watch it jose tell me because after you're finished with it i want to ruin it for you because there's two ways to look at this movie people will look at it and they're like oh it has kind of a happy ending mm-hmm. not if you not if you actually um i read somewhere there was a different analysis to the movie and if you look at it that way, you're just like, nope, this movie is even <laughs> creepier after you realize what, what's actually happening in the movie. What you saw. Mm. Yeah. Um, but now, as far as your other two movies, Creep Show 2 and what was the other one? Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street's a given. Yeah, that's a really mm. good one. Yeah. That original one, Freddy isn't, you know, cracking jokes. He's actually, he's yeah. scary. He's scary. He's scary, yeah. But now, well, Hall- like- your, Hall- your Halloween one is, you know, it's right up there too. Like it's, it's definitely my top five, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you can't go wrong with Halloween. It's a classic from the yeah. song, you know, the, uh, everything about it, you know, it's just like, man, you, you know, like I said, I had seen it recently. I just bought the, the Blu-ray maybe like a couple of years ago. Cause I hadn't, I hadn't seen Halloween in years, you know, at least the unedited version. Right. Cause remember mm-hmm. they would all back in the day, they would show it like on channel nine or whatever, yeah. like for Halloween, <laughs> they used to show a lot of horror movies on, on, you know on tv and i watched it and i was just like man this movie is like it, you know it's still i think it still holds up you know it's very creepy yeah and um it's it has a strong woman a lead role and mm-hmm. um uh, what's her, i forgot her name. jamie lee curtis jamie lee curtis you know she's in, in her early uh i want to say maybe like her late teens or early 20s in that mm-hmm. movie but strong woman uh, uh led role and she's the hero of the movie and you know it's like man it's it's scary and uh, you know I, I, it's another great movie i love that movie yeah um so you also said creep show too why that one yes. that's that's also like an anthology that you know kind of my vhs yeah. kind of thing but why'd you go creep show too oh man it's just you know it's I don't know. I think it's, it might be something uh, nostalgia, mm-hmm. you know, because I saw it when I was a kid. But I thought, you know, it has three stories in it. Uh, for the people that don't know, it has um, uh, Old Chief Wooden Head. Um, have you ever seen it, Robert? I. It was Creepshow 2, the one with Stephen King in it. No, no, that one's good, too. Steve, uh, that was part one. Okay. Uh, it's oh, Creepshow 2, the one with the um, where it's got that black tar in the, po- in the pond. Yes, yes. All that's right. the raft. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I have seen, but it's been it's been a long time since they creep show creep show too. So I had bought the the DVD like mm-hmm. years ago, maybe like ten years ago or something like that, and I was like, so <clears throat> again, it has three stories. It has the old chief wooden head, uh, which is about uh, a a wooden uh, Indian statue that comes to life. Excuse uh, that's me. The first story. Native <clears throat> American statue. Oh yes, <laughs> a Native American statue that comes to life. Um, the raft, which is, um, uh, like you said, some kind of tar substance mm-hmm. that, um, you know, eats its victims. <laughs> Maybe it's <laughs> Chupacabra related. I don't know. And uh, the third one is a hitchhiker of a, a, a guy that gets ran over and comes back to life over and over and, and haunts, you know, the girl. But, you know, when I was a kid, um, the raft has a nude scene, right? So I had a chick in the, in, the, in, the, <laughs> in the video, in a movie. And I remember when I like popped it in, I was like, man, this movie came out like 25 years ago. I was like, I wonder if she was really hot or if it was just you know me as a kid, you know, like thinking she was hot, right? And I popped it in and I was like, no, she's a babe. <laughs> I was like... I was like, yeah, she's still hot in this movie. You know, I was like, man, you know, I was like, there's no doubt about it. You know, I don't know what she looks like now. Well, they was getting this creep show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I got my creep show in early. (laughs) But yeah, no, it was just something about that movie, you know, that I, uh, uh, you know, it starts off animated, you know, with the little kid, you know, getting his comic book, the creep show comic book. Yeah. And um, yeah, to me, it was just like one of my favorite, like I said, it's just, uh, maybe a lot to deal with nostalgia that I love that movie so much. It just left an impression on me. Yeah. I've, it's been a while. I remember that one 
I, I remember the creep show ones also being kind of um, like uh, unsettling also like those, it, it's kind of yeah. weird when you look at, you look at those eighties, a lot of the late or eighties, se- late seventies movies, the horror movies. I mean, of course you get like the really cheesy stuff as time goes on. Like you've got your Friday 13th and everything, mm-hmm. but those early ones were so visceral and so like unsettling. They didn't, they didn't, I don't know how to put it. It's for example, like look at your Halloween three. The 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 movie is about them trying to kill kids, you know. Yeah. You know, right. That, right. Right. Some the stuff now that they put out with these horror movies, they're either PG thirteen or they're they don't take it too extreme. Now I'm not saying. Look, I'm not a fan of just like gore for the sake of there being gore, but yeah. so, but sometimes these movies can be can kind of make you feel queasy because you're it's not like what you mm-hmm. see. But it's like, what's going on in this movie? You're just like, this is just, I'm legitimately just violence. scared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of those, like, like I said, those 80s movies, like Friday 13th, uh, I'm sorry, not Friday 13th, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, that first Nightmare on Elm Street is just, it is creepy. It is oh, a yeah. Scary, it's a, it's it's a, a scary movie. Game, or a creepy movie. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And part two is great. And um, lots of you know, the, like you said, the Friday Thirteenths are good. You know, Part Two was great. Uh, the part, the part Three was great. You know, but then after I mean, a while, yeah, it gets cheesy after a while. Like after you know, yeah. you got Jason in space. You know, you're just like, yeah. all right, this isn't gonna work out. Jason takes Manhattan. Yeah, like, all right, now you're goofing <laughs> on it. And um, yeah, uh, now this I will admit, um, to me, the scariest movie ever made, in my opinion that I have never seen. Well, I, I mean, I've seen it, but I just can't watch it because I get so scared. Even as an adult, The Exorcist. All right, yep. I will. I was going to put that down, but that's like everybody's given. Everybody, I've watched The Exorcist, and yeah. I can't movie, watch that movie. I cannot. Even that, now, I will not watch that movie. <laughs> that movie is scary, and I've watched it yeah. like you know, once or twice. And there's part three, which I hear is really good. Can I be honest with you? Mm-hmm. One of the reasons yeah. I don't like watching The Exorcist is because I, you know, I grew up Catholic and, you know, yeah. I, I guess, you know, I'm still, I'm still Catholic. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm not like super, super Catholic, but whenever like The Exorcist, like part three, I'm like, man, if I watch this, am I going to go to hell? You know, is this, you know, is yeah. this going to be, <laughs> I feel guilty watching it because it's just like, I'm like this movie when I put it on, I know I'm watching a movie about Satan and, and yeah. exorcist and demons. There's no, there's no covering it up. And I'm just like, I'm like, Ugh. you know, I get that guilty feeling. Like there's a priest watching over me, just, you know, like the ghost of a priest just shaking his head being like, no, 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 no. You know? Yeah, no, I cannot watch that movie. I think uh, you're right. I think it's maybe because it deals with Satan and, mm-hmm. you know, also maybe because it could happen. You know, it can happen <laughs> to anyone. I think that's why one of the reasons, like, I ain't watching that movie, like, forget it. You know, I don't even want, you know. If you watch The Exorcist, yeah. it leaves you open to possession. <laughs> yes, it can leave you open to possession. And, you know, that's the last thing I watch. <laughs> also, I just want to enjoy our, my life in peace. <laughs> our, our next Geekers Creepers, you start talking in Latin. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Time to find uh, a new co host. <laughs> Uh, I wait until no. Yeah, I'll start talking Latin right now. <laughs> Jose is yeah, no, yeah, that movie I just cannot watch to this till this day. And um, it, it you know I want to watch it, but I'm like, nope, not yeah. doing it. Yeah, that that's that's a, that's a whole different level of scary. That yeah, <laughs> you know that's um, on a whole yeah, it's a, a just a whole different genre of, of horror. <laughs> <clears throat> But with that said, that's our. Uh, we'll probably touch base this in the future. Go over horror movies. Maybe what we could do is, well, if we watch one on Netflix or whatever, we can review it at some point. Do like a horror movie review. Right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna definitely check out the, that Swiss one that you were telling me about. The let the right one in. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna see yeah. if I can find it like on on Netflix or something. Yeah, uh, if you can find it, then tell me what you think. Like I said, it's a little more artsy, but that ending. Uh, I, you know, when I'll explain to you once you see it, like what, you know, what the ending, what the other theory of the ending is. So with that said, we're going to get a little more serious. We're going to talk about um, the case of Maureen Kelly. So I'm going to take a quick break and be right back. Okay. So I'm going to talk about 
a this is from the Charlie Project. The Charlie Project has a list of people who have gone missing in the past and gives a little story about them. Now, this story is about a young lady. Her name was Maureen Kelly, and she disappeared on June 9th, 2013. And she disappeared in Cougar, Washington. At the time she was 20, I'm sorry, she was at the time she was 19 years old. She was born on September 26, 1993. Of course, with this, we'll include a link to the page if you've seen her, if anybody known what's happened, if anybody can have information to help in her and help finding her, will that would of course be greatly appreciated. Now, let me give a little details about her disappearance. Kelly was last seen in Cougar, Washington on June 9th, 2013. She was with a group of friends at Canyon Creek Campground in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest when she left them on foot, saying she was going on a spiritual quest and would be back by midnight. She took off her shoes and all her clothes and was wearing only a fanny pack when she left. She was last seen at approximately 5 p.m. Her friends reported her missing in the early hours of June 10th. An extensive search turned up no indication of Kelly's whereabouts. Authorities determined she crossed Canyon Creek and headed north, climbing upwards towards Forest Service 54. But they lost the trail after that. Although the weather on the day she disappeared was mild, temperatures that that night dipped into the 40s. Without any clothes, she would have quickly succumbed to exposure. Investigators believe it's likely Kelly died in a mishap in the wilderness, but her body has never been found and her case remains unsolved. Now, I'd also like to read a, this is from Reddit. It's under Unsolved Mysteries, the subreddit. And this was posted by Sin Marie 97 This was two years ago. It's titled, Does Anyone Have a Clue What Happened to Anu Kelly? Now here she's called Anu. That was her nickname. Her name was Maureen, but they, her nickname was Anu. And the post goes like this. It says, Anu Kelly went to Canyon Creek Campground in Cougar, Washington with her friends on June 9th, 2013. Her friends reported that she went on a spiritual quest by herself around 5 p.m. And she said she would be back shortly. Mind you, Anu went on this quest by herself with only a compass and a fanny pack. Authorities only kept the search going for two days till they completely stopped the searches and left it up to Kelly's, uh, left it up to the Kellys to find their daughter. Her footprints stopped at a road, Forest Service 54, and has not been found since. Her family are constantly posting on her wall, asking to come home. But one thing that struck me as strange was a couple of her brother's posts. People were commenting on his Facebook post about his missing sister, and he replied, I know some things. Till this day, there's no clues leading to her disappearance. And so with that said, Jose, now this is a missing person case. There is a theory that she was uh, got lost in the woods. There's some yeah. unusual responses from the brother. Now, there's also some information that, and I can't find it now, but, uh, well, for example, there, it does say that her footsteps stopped on, at a road, and then that's it. Oh. You know, um, and the police only looked for two days. Uh, with that said, what in, in our layman's opinion, what do you think actually happened to Miss uh, to Maureen that on that day on June uh, on June ninth? Yeah, it's a uh, well, it's, uh, it's always sad to hear you know of people disappearing, especially in today's uh, day and age. You know, where mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know we have so many so much technology with our phones and satellites and all that stuff. Um, you know, it still kind of boggles the mind how people can just disappear. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm kind of, I was kind of leaning with what, what you were kind of implying, you know, something could have happened in the forest or whatever, and she got lost in, mm -hmm. you know, it could have been anything, it could have been some kind of animal that maybe attacked her. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, honestly, you know, I, I don't think it's anything malicious. <clears throat> At least I hope not. 
And uh, I, yeah, I just think it's, a, it's just a case of where, you know, I think something attacked her and, you know, some kind of animal and, it, you know, her, her remains are lost somewhere, you know, in that forest. So as I was doing research on this, there's uh, some other facts I don't, and I, not, I don't want to say facts. There's some other parts that I've, I've read. Number one is that when she was there with the friends, they were all doing mushrooms and mm-hmm. she was under the influence of mushrooms when she decided to go for a spiritual walk. And there's that issue again with the brother posting. Uh, what was that? Um, I know some things. Yeah. Now maybe he just said he meant something else that's just being taken the wrong way. There's also the issue that they were only searching for two days. If that's true, I mean, that's, that's nothing. You, I mean, somebody can survive in the forest for more than two days. Again, if the, her tracks stopped on the road, that gets a little weird also. Now yeah. her friends, her friends started to look for the next day. Look, if they were all doped up on mushrooms, I've never done mushrooms, but you know, if they were all doped up, maybe, you know, that doesn't wear off until later. And they decided at that point, Hey, she hasn't come back. I think it was kind of irresponsible on their part to let them go, go off on the inner forest on her own. So that leads to my other, you know, issue is like this story that all of a sudden she got naked and went off into the woods. Um, you know, it, it's as a friend, I would not let somebody do that on their own, no matter what, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, even if she had a compass and a fanny pack, you're not going to know what happens. You know, yeah. the other theory has been that maybe the friends know that something else happened and they've been trying to hide it. You know, that's why this mystery or this missing persons case, it's a little, it's a little weird because it's, it, there's all these circumstances, all these other, all these other, fa- and again, I don't know if they're facts, but all these other things that I've been reading that, mm-hmm make it seem that maybe something else happened. You know, um, again, if according to the story that I just read, it just seems that, yes, she decided to get naked, walk into the woods, disappeared, and that's it. She was just, like you said, it was a mishap. She froze yeah. that night, and there was a mishap. But, you know, the question remains, why would the friends not do anything? Why wouldn't they say, hey, don't go into the woods? Yeah, I mean, like one of one of the things that you know that happens a lot with missing persons is they tend to get lost in uh, like environments like a forest or near the ocean or mm-hmm. something like that, where something you know some kind of accident could have happened, right? Where, um, like you said, she could have froze, and you know, I don't know how big that forest is. Or I don't know mm-hmm. what kind of wildlife is in. Uh, is in that forest, you know, if, if there's like bears or anything like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you said it was in Washington state, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Again, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with that area. I don't, I don't know what kind of, again, what kind of wildlife is out there. And you, you, you know, I think what the brother might've been implying um, again is like you said, maybe they were all on, on mushrooms and they maybe could have lied to the, to the cops, like, you know, because like you said, it, it makes them look bad. It makes them look like irresponsible. Like they just let your friend wander off, you know, while they're all high on drugs and probably like, yeah, go do your thing, you know, whatever, you know. And then bam, she's gone. And um, yeah, you know, it's just a sad case, mm-hmm. you know, of, of, of something else that might have happened. Like, again, I don't know the geography of, the, of, of that forest. I don't know how big it is, or I don't know if, you know, you could like climb into like some kind of mountains or anything where she could have got trapped uh, and but you know they did do two days of, of of searching for her you know and um you would imagine they had some kind of um uh, of rescue dogs or <clears throat> excuse me search dogs search dogs looking for her well the and, other thing uh, that scares me about this not scares me but i guess worries me because i'm going over what was what was stated by uh sin marie 97 and this is her Um, what she states on Reddit, she does state that her footprint stopped at a road for service 54. So that there was, it stopped at a road. Okay. Um, And then again, it does state on the, uh, it does state on the Charlie project 
that an extensive search turned up no indication of Kelly's whereabouts. Authorities determined she crossed Canyon Creek and headed north, climbing upwards towards Forest Service 54. Um, so if that's a road, and look, if you, if you look at her picture, she's a very pretty young lady. Okay, she was 19 at the time. She's on the road. She's naked. All of a sudden, you know, did something nefarious happen at that point? Mm. You you would think that, you know, if I'm driving along and I see somebody, one, I honestly don't know if I, you know, if I would pull over, you know, if I saw somebody, even if it's a lady naked on the road, I'd be a little nervous that it's a, it's a trick. And there's somebody waiting to, you know, as soon as I pull over, you know, some guy is going to, you know, shoot me and take my car machete you or something you know but still you've got you know somebody else might have taken advantage of you know this poor girl if she's if she's still you know on mushrooms not knowing what's going on because they suddenly you know her footsteps stop right there yeah Yeah. i just i see but like go ahead now the the problem with that is her so her footsteps stop right Mm-hmm. But are there other footsteps around it or are there tire marks around it or where like somebody could have like got her and like, see, that's very vague. That Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. You know, like, was there bare, like, was there bare um, footprints? Like, obviously they're following her footprints, you know, and if they just disappear, then, that, you know, now you're, now you're talking about something else. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, um, I don't know. I, I don't, it's just unusual that Again, the whole situation is unusual. The fact that she suddenly, she suddenly disappears. Uh, the fact that her friends let her go off into the wilderness. Um, the fact that she decided to get naked and just walk out into the wilderness, and I, the the whole situation is unusual. And yeah, and you know, you've got a family member. You've got family again. They did a search only for two days. If that's true, I honestly don't think that's that's long enough to do a search, not out in the wilderness, you know. Um, because if she was lost, she could survive for two days being lost. I know they said that she could die. You know, it was so cold that she may have gotten hypothermia. Again, that's another reason why the friends never should have let her go off. To be honest, um, yeah. But that being said, um, yeah, I, I I don't know, and I don't want to throw out that situation as far as uh she got lost in the you know for you know she got out in the road and somebody may have done something as Mm -hmm. because because i think that's what happened no but you know when something so unusual happens i just you know uh it, it could be one of many things and and for her to to have slipped and something happened in the woods of course, that's that is a, a a plausible explanation, but then I believe the police should have done much more work trying to find, you know, trying to find her body. To be honest, her remains. Right, mm-hmm. right. Now, what is the name of, of the forest? Uh, the what, forest. What's, I'm going to try and see if I can find it on um, Google yeah. Maps. Since then. it's it's Cougar, Washington. Cougar, Washington. Mm-hmm. Let's see do this in real time oh there it is cougar washington so one of the first pictures that came out was um some kind of elk okay <laughs> so <laughs> just def- and it looks like there's mountains yeah it looks pretty big it looks huge as far as forest yeah yeah i mean it looks pretty massive and you know it's, it's sad to say that I think that's my that might have been what could have happened to her. You know, she I mm-hmm. think she um, somehow got um, lost in that in that terrain. Hold on, let's see here. Here we go, satellite. Yeah, it's like nothing but green everywhere, you know. Yeah, and it's like right by Mount St. Helens too, like the the volcano. So. Yeah, more, I guess most likely that's what what it was. And it's sad, you know. Um, yeah. It would be nice for the family to have some type of closure on this one. But again, I will attach a link to um, uh, to this, uh, to our podcast, as well as from the Charlie Project. If anybody has any information or maybe just knows that maybe, you know, her friends that were there have not told 
you know, because sometimes, you know, people talk as you get older, yeah. they slip. So maybe there's some other facts that, um, of what happened that night that could uh, reopen the investigation or at mm-hmm. least lead to some type of closure for the family. Yeah. Like you said, also, you know, um, hopefully it wasn't something nefarious because, you know, when you're dealing with some, some kind of a terrain like that, where they may have known, like, you know what, she's naked. We, you know, we could take advantage or whatever. And, you know, you know, hopefully this isn't the case. Right. But yeah. you know, where they had to like kill her, you know, it, you know, it seems like that would be a place where it would be very difficult. Well, obviously the cops can find her. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hopefully this isn't a crime that, that that sadly goes, um, you know, just where you're not able to find out what's going on for like maybe ever, you know, hopefully it's just, like I said, hopefully it's just she something happened in the forest where she got lost and, and maybe got an eat, um, and, you know, eaten or something by some kind of wildlife, you know, which is still a horrible way to go, but. Yeah. Uh, like I said, hopefully, you know, uh, in the future, somebody, you know, there'll be something, uh, some type of closure for this family. Cause that's, yeah. you know, and this is fairly new. I mean, this happened in 2013 and you're right. Like right now, you know, if somebody goes missing, you'd probably find them with a the phone, but of all things, she didn't even have her phone with her because she decided to just yeah. to go out, you know, uh, you know, go out naked again. It's just, yeah. the, the, just that right there. It's that fact right there is what, kind of changes a lot of this whole situation. It's just the fact that she was 19. I remember being 19, 20, and we did, you know, as, as a teenager, you did dumb things or your early 20s. Yeah. But even then, like if I had a friend that was going to say, I'm going to go out into the forest, uh, I, I'll see you later, and, you know, get taken, I would even, I would I would say, no, 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 stop being a dummy. Yeah. Just, just sit here and, you know, wait till wait till your shrooms come you know uh you know wait till that high is gone and then and then rethink it you know because that's that's something that just i don't know i mean i and i guess it's just the type of people you know different people act differently for me i would not have um i would not have let that person go out i know it's not you know if the person goes out at the end of the day it's their choice but i've done whatever i could to stop that person from doing something like that no, I think you're absolutely right. I would have, I would have done the same thing. I would have definitely prevented. Um, so I'll give you a, a, a quick story okay. as to something that happened to me uh, when I was a kid as well. I was probably the same age. Probably I was like a teen or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, we um, got a hold of some booze, and <laughs> my we gave some to my younger brother, who was like, <laughs> he was probably like fourteen or fifteen or something like that. <laughs> We were all teenagers, right? But he was like four years difference. And he, oh man, that, <laughs> that booze affected him like, like very bad. And he was acting, you know, like uh, wild, you know, he was like running around. We did not just let him run around, you know, we mm-hmm. went after him. You know, we chased <laughs> him and we dragged him and we threw him back in the car. And, you know, I, I can't imagine like me being like, ah, just let him go, whatever, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I was, I was like, man, you know, he's a kid, he's four, and he was fourteen. You know, had it been someone my age, I still would have been like, hey, you know, we're not going to let you, especially by, being under the influence, right? Yeah. I would have been like, you're not going over there by yourself. Like, you, get out of here. You know, we we either are going, you're going to go later. And there's just no way that that person, uh, at least under my watch, would have, you know, gone alone to the forest. Yeah, it's just you know, it's sad circumstances. Um... And, uh, you know, like I said, we'll hopefully, hopefully there'll be some type of closure, you know, um, because again, yeah. you know, you have stories where people disappear and there's always that one theory. You're like, well, maybe the person wanted to restart their life and they just disappeared. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't see this being one of those because if the person was, you know, naked, it's, you know, it's not yeah. like, you know, you're going to suddenly show up at, um, you know, at the, at the local Starbucks wanting to restart your life. It doesn't, you know, that's. That doesn't seem like that's an option here, but you know, like I said, hopefully there'll be uh, some type of closure for this family. But you know, we'll see in the future. And um, there have been, um, there are a few, uh, there are a few podcasts 
that go into her and they go into some crazy theories about other things that happen. I don't want to bring those up because at the end of the day, those are, those are just extremely, you know, sensational, sensational theories. I just, I do hope, like I said, at the end of the day, that the family does have some type of closure on this matter. Exactly. Okay. So with that said, that's the end of our show for today. Jose, are there any closing thoughts regarding any of the geekers or the creepers topics we talked about today? Another great show. Actually, I do have some um, late breaking news. It's not breaking news. It's from a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, I don't want to get too much into it, but um, it was regarding a PlayStation recording um, all audio chat. Did you hear about oh, that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought about it right now. I was like, you know, that's... I'm not down with that. You know, everyone's recording everything anyways, but still, I don't think you should have like a snitch line. So of- since you've uh, brought that up here now, of course it's going, I, it's going to be just, uh, so PlayStation is going to be recording audio chat, but it's going to be party audio chat, which is uh, a little unusual. So it's everything when you're having a conversation in a party, I guess you can report somebody and they yeah. can look up what you had been saying. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Jose, because we are, uh, sorry, it's, it's, on Twitter, I believe PlayStation, because uh, we are, we do follow PlayStation, they did post mm-hmm. something on this stating that they are taking people's uh, uh, comments into consideration and they're going to, they're going to, they might be changing that whole party chat thing. Yeah. You know, I was kind of thinking like, I wish people would get up in arms about other stuff, you know, other than party chat, you know, <laughs> like, like on your phone, <laughs> they should be able to like, people should be in an uproar. Like, Hey, you can't record this. Like what's wrong with you? Like, what's, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know why for whatever reason with gaming, it became a, such a huge problem, but you know, it's just one of those where, in my opinion, I don't think anyone should be recording, recording anything. You know, it should be my own conversation and uh, or whatever. And I agree. But, man, Jose, I'm telling you, as as uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was trying to find the um, I'll put it down. I was trying to find the uh, the link to the tweet. But I mean, it happens everywhere. And I had this conversation yeah. with um, uh, with my friends this past weekend or not this past week, but the weekend before where. If I don't know if you've ever done this, but you've had a conversation about something that you don't, you didn't look up anything on your phone. You just have a conversation, like let's say about diapers, right? And yeah. and you have your phone near you. Now you don't look up diapers or anything. You just had this conversation, but then strangely enough, you go to your Facebook feed and you've got a mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, you've got diaper advertising. Yeah, a diaper advertisement. Mm-hmm. It happens. It happens more than I'd like to admit, but you're right. I mean, and people are saying that, well, you know, you must have looked up diapers at one point. And I've, I've told people and my friends have said the same thing. They're like, no, I've never looked up that topic. It just suddenly showed up. And, yeah. and it's just, look, that sounds like a crazy conspiracy. And I'm, and I'm, I usually don't, I'm not a big fan of conspiracies, but I mean, it just, it's just, that's not a conspiracy. That's, that's like, <laughs> Because I'll tell you exactly what happened to me, too. Mm-hmm. This happened, and I noticed it yesterday. Um, I bought um, a cologne the other day, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, a certain brand, right? And I, again, I purchased it, and I went on Facebook, and that's all that was being advertised was that specific <laughs> brand that I bought. And I was just like, hmm. I was like, what are the odds that, you know, the, I was and then in my mind, I was kind of like, what's the point now? I already bought it. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, what are we going to do, buy 10 of them? Or... Well, the thing is, it also follows you to places. Because I went with my friend Mike and Kelly. We went out to um, uh, a Chinese restaurant by your place. And again, I didn't look up the Chinese restaurant. But I think it tracks down, like, where you're at. So next thing I know, I'm getting these ads for that Chinese restaurant. Um, mm. Yeah, man. Um, we could talk about this some other time, you know, get a little more into yeah, that. Yeah, because yeah, this is definitely something that's, you know, a little creepy. But as far as PlayStation, they said they're looking into it. I understand why they want to do it. You know, it's to um, to prevent. I, I was listening. I was here hearing another podcast where they said, "Well, you know, when you get these, like, you know, we're forty, right? Let's say mm-hmm. we're playing game. You know, this game with like a ten-year-old kid. You know, 
first off, if there's a 10 year old kid in my party chat, I'm getting out of that party chat because this 10 year old kid and I, even though we might play the same game, I got nothing really that to, right. I, honestly, I, sh- I shouldn't be in a party chat with a 10 year old kid at the end of the day. Yeah. We might be playing the same game, but it's inappropriate. Mm. You know? it's like a family member or something like that where you guys are playing like Rocket League together. Or fun I, I agree. Together. Yes. Yes. But if it's some strange, that's different. strange kid. Um, and to have party chat being recorded, I, in those instances, I could see where maybe it's a good thing. Because, you know, if I'm a parent mm. and I find out that, you know, like, I'm like, you know, my kid's talking to this much older person. I want to find out what they're talking about. You know, yeah, is, that's this a good guy, point. is this guy having point. some, you know, you know, asking him stuff that it's inappropriate. inappropriate. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it gets kind of weird, but you know, that should maybe then maybe what PlayStation has to do is make it something you opt in on, you know, like a yeah. parent, like parental things where a parent puts right, it in right, there right. where they can record it. Now I'm going to be honest, you know, the one negative thing about that is that, the other person may not know that they're being recorded. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, at the end of the day, that person should not be in a party chat with a 10 year old kid. Right. 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 No. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good, I I didn't see it through that aspect. I just thought kind of like, cause you know, I thought maybe it was more like, well, somebody said a racist term. Um, You know, like you said, a lot of kids are, Mm -hmm. are known to, to do that. But I just thought maybe I was like, yeah, it sounds to me more like Sony's going to try and start selling our data, you know. Oh, I, I honestly, I was, like, I was thinking the same thing too, man. I could definitely see that leading down, being that slippery slope where mm-hmm. they say we're doing it for a good reason. But next right, thing you right, know, right. you know, you all of a They're sudden have an advertisement for, you know, the next God of War, you know, because you talked about exactly. it in party chat. Yeah, you're right. I, I looked at it more as like a Trojan horse. You know, mm-hmm. they, they say it's for good, but at the end of the day, it's to profit, you know? Yeah. And look, other companies do that. Facebook does it. Other companies do it. Yeah. And, and uh, it's nothing new. And you're right. The last thing I want in my gaming experience, especially if I'm paying so much money for a console, I'm paying so much money to have uh, PlayStation Plus. I'm paying money for the games you know, mm-hmm. play money for, you know, everything else that I'm using with these games to suddenly have them still advertise on me like that. Um, like, no, no, you know, that's, it's, <laughs> it's not good. It's not right. And, uh, and if you want me to, you know, to eventually stop supporting your council, this is a way to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's definitely been a, a, a rough a couple months in my opinion for playstation with other their, their goofs that they've been doing yeah it's like they went you know they were doing so good with their ps4 and then with ps5 it's just been you know mistake after mistake but, but you know this is a, a topic for another day I guess. yeah i think we could talk about that next time man. <clears throat> um so well with that said uh, uh we're gonna be closing up here any any last words for the listeners jose yeah i just hope everyone has a great week and enjoys the show and we'll catch you guys next time Okay, great. And as usual, yes, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. We greatly appreciate it. Jose and I do this not not only for the big bucks we make, but because we actually enjoy yeah. talking about these topics. And we, as usual, please, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, anything you want us to talk about, email us at geekerscreeperscast at gmail.com. Follow us at geekerscreepers. And until next time, everybody, I wish you all the best in life, love, and gaming. Good night, everybody.